Hello there YouTube and welcome to another starter guide, this time for the Thief. And as per last time, I went through Helgen Keep quickly. I'm out here with a longbow, steel dagger, imperial sword, some arrows, full imperial gear, and the novice gear you get off the mage. I got all the potions I could. I've only got a raw rabbit leg with me, so we're doing minimal food on this run at the moment. I also grabbed all the ingredients that were in there that I possibly could. And I've got a few lockpicks. That is all. And now we are going to run down to the uh, Guardian Stones. And on the way you want to grab any ingredients you can. But the ones to focus on are going to be all the different flowers. Which are over this way. So purple, blue and uh, there's red somewhere around there. I'm going to grab a thistle as well. And also, here we are, butterflies. You want both monarch butterflies and blue butterflies. Whenever you see them, chase them down and catch them. In addition, stuff like Moritapanella and literally anything else you find will come in handy. But don't worry too much as long as you get whatever you can carry, basically. So, now down to the Guardian Stones. Now, a quick drop down to... Okay, that's just a texture. Quick drop down here, and you get some hanging moss, and activate the Thief Stone. At this point, we're also going to see... Okay, we might be able to do this. Sometimes the Hunter is sitting over here, which makes for a very easy steal. However, if we do a quick save, take his coin purse. And undetected, let's try... And pick this lock without him noticing. There you go, you immediately get some free stuff. I don't want anything other than gold, though. And stop paying attention to me, please. We're going to steal all the salmon as well. There we go. Now, we're going to go through this way. So, going through the river, off down to Riverwood. And, yeah, yeah, we're getting tired and stuff as this is all going on. As we go down, there'll be salmon on these waterfall bits, and also under here. See if there's a salmon there, but what you want to do is catch at least one salmon that's going up a waterfall. So it'll be jumping up there. But there's a few waterfalls you can try on. See that one? We didn't find any. However, right here, there'll be some more. And you can see the salmon jumping up. So come on, salmon. Come on. Come on. There, there, there they are. See? And you just try and catch. You just need to catch one of these for the purpose of this. Oh, I didn't quite get it there. Okay. Just assume I catch one. This might. There we go. Salmon meat and salmon roe. That's what you're after. Then up this way there's some wolves which we're going to uh, avoid. Because we don't want to be getting into fights. We're just here to make money. Also over this way... Oh. Get the Nurm root, and whenever you see... Oh, they were just here. Yeah, whenever you see the things that fly over the water, they're dart wings, you want to pick them up too. Ideally, there's one. See, that's a blue dart wing. It'll, it'll say Dragonfly. If you look at them too long, they do just run away, so just catch them as soon as you see them. But ideally, grab some of those as well. In Riverwood itself now, there's also a few more ingredients you can get here, like more Mora Tepanella and more flowers and everything like that. However, what we're going to focus on right now are looting barrels. You'll want to loot barrels for a salt pile. That's what you're ideally looking for, but also food's going to be good. Either eat it or carry it with you if it's something that will come in handy. And here I'm carrying on with the main quest. I'm talking to Gerda, but if you sided with Hadvar, you just talk to Alvor. Basically the same thing. We're just running through with this because it's going to mean we get a speech check when we get into a white run. And also, she's about to let us pinch a bunch of stuff. Any second now. There we go. Do you have any supplies I could take? And you immediately get free stuff. In this case, we are going to take everything she's got. There will... Yep. There will be a bunch of food. And, um... Also, some, like, valuables occasionally. i got an amethyst there and a ring. You sometimes get an enchanted ring, which is great, but we did not get lucky this time. Now, on our way over, we are going to grab the salmon as well. This is basically going to sort food out for us. This time it's not stealing, so we don't need to worry about being hidden. And we are going to head into the inn. What I'm going to do now is talk to Ar Orgnar, ask what he's got for sale. And food-wise, you're really just looking for um, salmon meat, 
or anything particularly cheap like this. There we go, cooked beef will do. Just buy anything with low weight, high hunger, that is cheap. So we're going to buy a couple of cooked beef. And that's all we're really going to need. Um, I'm also going to buy the venison chop just to be safe. And in addition, ingredients. Alright, on here, blue butterfly wing. Buy that. Um, oh, ice race teeth. Those, uh, do I want to go for that? No, 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 we're going to avoid that. Lavender, buy that. Salt pile, buy any of that. And wheat, buy any of that. All of those are good ingredients to have. Hard not to. In addition, there's a whole bunch more barrels you can loot around this place. So I would advise doing that. Because you get a whole bunch more food. Yep, ale's going bad. Including a fish barrel at the back. And this is a really good one, because this is going to give us some of meat and salt pile guaranteed, as well as some alchemy ingredients. Now what we're going to do is hire a room. Uh, oh wait, not Orgnar. Talk to Delphine, rent a room for 10 gold, get a plenty of money for this, and this one? I always mess this up. Nope, it's the other one. It's always the other one. Yep, just go into your room, uh, make sure to close the door, because you want to have a quick gander and see if there's anything of value. There's often not, but it's worth taking a look. However, now that we've done that, sleep until you're looking at 8am uh, the next morning. Now, when you get into the level up screen, you can potentially choose anything. I would advise going for health early on, though, just because it will keep you alive. Now, here, you want to put a rank into Alchemist. Depending what rank, uh, what race you are, you might be able to put a second rank in. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to put one into Speech as well, because both of these will be needed. However, if you're not playing as a Khajiit or something like that, you might not have 20 Alchemy already. So for the purposes of this walkthrough, I'm only putting one rank in there. Now, we wake up and we are hungry, so what we're going to do is eat some of the food that we bought that has high restore hunger. In this case, eat, always try and eat the heaviest thing you've got. Now, do a quick save before jumping on the alchemy lab. And here, we're going to pop out some very quick power potions. Uh, oh, is that the right one? <laughs> There's too many power potions, I can't remember which does which. Okay, wheat. Hanging Moss and Blue Mountain Flower is always one that works. In addition, Blue Butterfly Wing, Blue Mountain Flower and Bone Mill should have got um, some Bone Mill on Helgen Keep off of Skeletons there. Bear Claws, Blue Mountain Flower and Wheat as well. That does a fair bit. In addition, uh, where is it? Where am I looking? Lavender, Blue Mountain Flower and Chicken's Eggs. There's a whole bunch of power potions you can make straight away. There's tons more we could go into, but I'm not going to cover them just yet, because I mean, we just need a few right now. That done, we are going to head next door, basically, to the Riverwood Trader. Talk to Luke and inside, what have you got for sale? And it's sometimes worth having a quick look. He sometimes has something nice, like a necklace of minor haggling isn't bad, but you're not going to be able to buy anything. So what you want to do here is go down to potions, sell any useless potions you picked up, for example, I'm not keeping any of those. Then sell him your profit potions you've just made. And this is going to get you a bunch of gold. I'd say aim to have over 500 gold. It just gives you plenty to work with. Now we are going to leave Riverwood because we've spent far too long here. I mean, that was at least five minutes I spent in this place. So what we could do here is go around that way and fight the wolf and do all of that stuff. But I'm playing on Legendary Difficulty Survival Mode, and even one wolf is dangerous at this point. So what I'm going to do instead is the nice, simple thing of just jumping in the water and flowing down. In addition, there's some more waterfalls this way. So, as per last time, try and catch salmon and you'll get some salmon roll off of them. Now, you will then get down, you'll go past one bridge and there'll be another bridge on your left. Go under this and you'll hear a ringing, there'll be a Nurm route. Now, something I'm going to do here is hook up healing. Because I got attacked by a mug crab whilst I was flying down the river, which can happen. So if you do that, you will need to heal yourself if you're playing on survival mode. Because you don't get to he be healed otherwise. Halt. Outside of White Run, you'll get accosted by this guard. Use the persuade option. But we'll be an eye and he likely stops you twice. No, he hasn't stopped me twice this time, but you get a level up in speech from that. Then into White Run we go. Alright, on the way up to Dragon's Reach now, I've been grabbing ingredients as I go, however, two important things to grab are, oh, change the first person for this bit, hanging moss just up this way, 
and as we go up as well, we'll reach the end, and then instead of going straight in, we're actually going to want to swim around quickly, because down this way, there are a whole bunch of Nordic barnacle clusters. So make sure to grab, if not all of these, at least most of these, but you get like a good four or five, it's got, it's got to be a half a dozen. There's also a skeleton here, which has a bit of gold. Make sure you don't drown though, because that's bad. You don't want to do that. Now I'm into Dragon's Reach. Now I personally am not even going to bother dealing with the Jarl. Instead, I'm just running over to Farangar, asking him if he's, he's if he's the only wizard in White Run, and agreed to deliver Frost Salts. Down into kind of a main square bit of White Run. There's a bunch of ingredients here. I'd suggest taking them all because they're all going to come in handy at some point down the line. There's also a whole bunch of barrels you can loot, including most of the ones around the vendors aren't actually steel. So you can literally just take whatever's in them, which is lovely. But what we need to do is go into Arcadia's Cauldron. Inside here, talk to her and give her the frost salts. She will then give you potions. Potion of Illusion, Enhanced Stamina, and Brief Invisibility. That last one is very important. Now what we're going to do is take, especially the orange-blue Dartwing, and we'll basically take everything. Most important things though were the Dartwings, the Canis Root up here is an Impster we want. Take the Hagraven Feathers, the Death Bell, and take the Ectoplasm, uh, what else? I'm trying to think of what else is going to be most important. Basically just take all of the ingredients that aren't stealing. Just go around and do all of that, and then you should have most of the stuff I have. Make sure you take the Elves' Ear and the Frost Miriam. Frost Miriam in particular will be incredibly helpful. And just taking all of this quickly. There's also some healing potions, and yeah, that thing always seems to contain salt pile. Don't know if it's guaranteed, but it happens all the time for me. In addition, in this back room here, there is a fish barrel. Fish barrels are amazing. Whenever you see them, loot them for everything they have. Right, she'll then start chasing after you, which does make her one of the slightly more difficult people to steal from. But we're not going to do that at the moment, because, I mean, it's not like we're a thief or anything, is it? Now, with that out of the way, we have a bit of crafting to do. We just want to make ourselves some power potions. But we're going to do it the nice, easy way and use garlic, which can be picked up in Helgen Keep. If need be, you can buy it off of people as well, but garlic, Nordic Barnacle Cluster, which we just picked up underneath Dragon's Reach in that little pond bit out there, and the Salmon Row, which you get from catching... One sec, if I do that. Salmon Row, which is this looking thing, which you get from catching salmon that are jumping upstream. Make as many of these as you can. For me, it's just two, because I'm amazingly short on garlic. That will level up alchemy a hell of a lot, and give you some nice profit potions to sell. Now we get onto the difficult bit. You're going to be looking for a few different things here. Ideally, oh, I'm going to buy the garlic because that's good for the potion we just made. Ideally, you want to be able to make some paralysis poisons. The ingredients for that are briar heart, canis root, human flesh, imp stool, and swamp fungal pod. And she has none of them on her, so we're going to be doing this the difficult way. Instead, look for... Uh, what else is there? Okay, Blue Dartwing and Cyrodelic Spinetail, which she has one of. Uh, Daedra Heart's something else that works, but you're not going to be able to afford it. Namira's Rot as well, see if that's there. And there's not. Powdered Mammoth's Tusk? No. So, Blue Dartwing and Cyrodelic, Cyrodelic Spinetail, Spade, Spade Tail even, those are things you should be able to find. The Blue Dartwing you can catch whilst you're going through all the rivers, and the Spinetail you loot a few fish barrels, so you should be able to get that. Uh, anything else to grab right now? Okay, we've got Frost Mary on Purple Mountain Flower, that will do. Alright, something else you might want to do is you picked up hopefully at least a couple of Nurm Root, to see if there's any Lunar Moth Wing is going to be the first wing, thing, which there isn't. In addition, Ice race, ice Wraith Teeth, Vampire Dust, which is not here, or Chorus Eggs, which are here and are generally a little bit cheaper, are all worth grabbing. Ice Wraith Teeth is a little expensive, but it's going to be worth it. 
Now what I'm going to do here is sell her Potion of Water Breathing. And that basically bottoms out her gold. You might also want to take a quick look at potions for yourself in case there's anything you particularly want to get, but most of the stuff you'll be able to make if need be. However, she m could have a Paralysis Poison on her, which Come would be good. Down at the carriages here, there's a few more barrels you can loot, which are always good. See, more salt pile. Oh, look at that, nine salt pile. I was quite lucky, but yeah, you'll normally get salt pile or food, any of which will be handy to have. And do not steal the horse. We're instead going to the carriage, and jump up here, and ask to hire the carriage to Riften. This will only cost you 20 gold. Now we are outside Riften stables, and we are drained and famished and just horribly close to death basically so eat a fair bit I feel better but still peckish so I've got another cooked beef there we go I'm now well fed now here there's fish barrels which you want to take all the stuff out of and there's a barrel there that barrel there had meat and salt pile in it which is great and there's, oh, there's a Khajiit camp down here it's random so we're going to ignore it however at the back there's a Canis root you will want that now what we're going to do is something stupidly dangerous. Get yourself out a bow, which you can pick up in Helgen Keep. If not, I mean, you can always buy one if need be. They're incredibly cheap. Or you can do the Fendal Follower quest. Now what we're going to do is run down this way. I'm going to quick save. Now run past the second kind of watchtower bit there. Over this way, you'll run past a gourd as well, which is something a bit weird. And up this way, there's a tower there. Now, what we're going to do is completely insane and may get us killed. So, quick saving or hard saving or just some type of saving is essential. There's up here, there's a frostbite spider. We're going to sneak attack it and have it run after us. And we need to not get hit by its attacks. Because it can basically one-hit kill us, but we want it chasing after us as well. So it's going to be a bit of a tricky navigating situation. Cool, it's running after us. So you will want to be well fed for this, or at least not peckish, because you need to be able to run and go and do all of that nice and handily. And run all the way up here, and get the guards to engage it. You see, yep, they're already fighting it. There should be one in each of these towers here. So, and yep, they'll all start running down. Yeah, we've got it nice and easy now. At this point, you can pretty much safely run by. Look at that, it's dead. However, well, uh, yeah, there's sometimes more enemies around here, often wolves. So, are the wolves going to activate? Wolves are... Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the wolves here. Although, not as well, because that was a terrible, terrible miss on my part. Ow, 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 okay. Guards, 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 guards. At this point, you'll probably want to use any healing potions you have if you need to. However, we just about made it through that. Now I'm going to hook up healing. <laughs> just restore my health quickly. Yeah. Magic hello. Cool. Once you've successfully done that, I recommend quick saving again. Now we're going to go back to where the, um, the frostbite spider was. Check that you're not getting followed by any wolves or anything like that. And now you have what Major Slack calls the Broken Tower of Xenophar. There's a skeleton here. There is an amulet of Xenophar. That's what we're here for. There's also a lockpick thingy. There is a shrine of Xenophar. And a bunch of gold. However, it costs 100 gold to receive a blessing. So I'm not going to do that right now. However, if you did get hit and got diseased with anything. So in this bit it says like, Oh, you have whatever which is killing you then you may want to activate that shrine. Now, on the way back up, I suggest looting the Frostbite Spider, because you may as well. There'll normally be a bunch of arrows in it, which is a good way to get a few free arrows. Then you're going to want to go into each of the towers that are around here. I'm sneaking my way up just because there's normally someone there, and this is a good way to get some free sneak levelling without having to worry. However, all the stuff in here is just free to take. 
Uh, obviously, don't pickpocket just yet, though, because they will get annoyed with that. And there's a bunch of confiscated good chests. These are ADAP level locked, so you may have a bit of trouble with them, but if you quick save beforehand, then it should only take you a few attempts, hopefully, to get... Come on. To get into them. And in each of these, you'll find nice valuables, including gems, and often... You get like crafting supplies and stuff, but gems and jewellery are the main thing you're going for. However, anything that sells for a good amount you will definitely want to pick up. And um, there's one, two, three of these just here. And I'm going to loot all of them quickly in exactly the same way as I did that one. With all of those looted, you'll then want to head into Riften. However, you get stopped by a guard again. But as with last time, if you simply persuade them, you get another level in speech, because guards are nice like that. Now, once you've done that, head into this first little building here that you come across, which is Helga's bunkhouse. If you head upstairs, there is a bed just here, which you can sleep in. And you can also warm yourself up a bit. If you really feel like it, you can steal from this place. However, I don't remember there being anything particularly great in here. So, just go for a good night's sleep, and sleep until next morning, same kind of time. Wake up and you'll immediately be hungry or peckish or something like that. So eat some of the random food you picked up that you don't need. There we are. And go back outside again. At this point, you're going to want to make sure you equip the Amulet of Xenophar. This is going to get you 10% better prices straight away. Help me. I'm going to lose my yep, 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 someone's going to lose their job. We don't care, though, because we're a thief and we're horrible and la di da di da uh, Give... The beggar a gold coin, and this gives you the gift of charity, which gives you fortify persuasion, which plus ten speech. And now we're gonna want to talk to Brynjolf. And the whole my wealth is none of your business, and agree to go along with his scheme of being a thief. Yeah, surprising. We're actually gonna, you know, do thief stuff on this thief starter guide. Yep, just say you're ready, and let's get this started. Now, you're gonna want a quick save so you don't mess this up. What you need to do first is unlock this sliding door. Maybe running lower lockpicks, so make sure... Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, make sure you quick save beforehand. If you break too many lockpicks, you can just take a look afterwards. Now, I advise quick saving after every step of this so you don't mess it up. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you do mess it up, but I like actually getting into the Thieves Guild for being a good thief instead of failing miserably and then them letting me in. Perfect. Take everything from here. Go, and then sneak your way around. You can steal from the other people as well, and this is a good way to get a whole bunch of enchanted loot under there. However, that's all randomly enchanted loot, I believe, so we're not going to get that. Now, go on to Branche. At this point, we're going to spend another couple of perks, because we've got two perks. First one, put a rank into Pickpocket. It's going to make that easier. And I'm going to put a rank into Sneak. So we're 20% harder to detect. Now, quick save, and make sure nobody's watching you... There you go. Once you're safe, reverse pickpocket Medesi Silver Ring onto Branche. This generally goes off alright, but there's a chance it will fail. Now to walk to Brynjolf, and he offers you a place in the Thieves Guild if you make it down to the Ragged Flagon. Go over to Grelka. We can sell her our other potion of water breathing. Suddenly we've got a bunch more gold. You might want to buy like a lockpick, some lockpicks or anything if need be, but hopefully you don't need to do that. In addition, she has a whole bunch of good stuff. She has a pretty decent uh, merchant to get enchanted, ar enchanted light armor off of. Come back when you're ready to spend more gold. Now, talk to Medesi as well, Just what you and see. sell off some of the um, jewelry you got for even more gold. Safe. Now, at this point, you should have, yeah, you should have thousands of gold at this point, without worry. Now, what we're going to need to do is actually do some more alchemy! Yay! Yeah, I love alchemy. I know, I'm sorry. Also, more barrels down this way, so I advise looting all of them. But if you jump down here, and right down at the end, you'll see this is where the alchemist in Riften is. Elgrim's Elixirs. 
In here, talk to the lady with a completely unpronounceable name, and check for ingredients again. Alright, we have a Briar Heart. That is an ingredient for a Paralysis Potion, so we're taking that. I'm also taking the Chorus Eggs, so they can make invisibility potions. Uh, no Canis Root. Have you got human flesh on you? Is something that's completely normal to say. Uh, any Imp Stool? We've not got Imp Stool either. She does have, does have Salt Pile, which is always good to buy. And she's got Swamp Fungal Pod. That is excellent. In addition, uh, Chorus Eggs, Ice Wraith Teeth, all that stuff. No Root Vampire Dust. No, no, no. I think we're all good with all of that stuff now. So just sell her any other stuff you don't particularly need. Uh, there we go. At this point you may want to make more power potions just to sell to her, but I'm not going to worry about it because I won't need tons of gold for this run. What I'm going to do now though is quick save, because always quick save before you do a crafting session. I'm going to make a few different potions. First off, some invisibility potions. So here, chorus eggs and nern root. Nern root, there we go. These will make... Da, 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 potion of Invisibility. Uh, stuff like uh, Luna, Mothwing, Vampire Dust, and Ice Wraith Teeth also work. I'll show you here. Ice Wraith Teeth and Chorus Eggs. Potion of Invisibility. We got more of those than we need now. Now Paralysis. You can do that with Briar Heart. And Canis Root. They're two other things. And Canis Root. Human Flesh we didn't get any of. That is something a bit rare, so I don't expect you to have that. But Canis Root and Imp Stool, you can get both of those from uh, Arcadia's. In addition, da, 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 where is it? Swamp Fungal Pod and Canis Root, that does it as well. So, tons of Paralysis Poisons now. You should only need a couple of them, hopefully, but make as many as you can. In addition, there's a few other potions you could make which can work quite well, including, where is it? Cyrodelic Spine Tail and Blue Dart Wing. This makes a poison of fear. You'll ideally want this as a backup if you do need it. And at this point I think we'll be able to get by okay. So now out we go and we're gonna head over towards the Ratway. Now down here is the Thieves Guild entrancey bit. Make sure to loot these barrels as you'll get some ingredients out of that and can sometimes get stuff out of these as well. Now go into sneak mode and get yourself out Ideally a dagger, but a sword or any other weapon will do as well, and put on a poison of paralysis. Now, quick save before you go in, because this could go badly. Now, sneak up this way. And you'll hear... N1 and... There we go, we paralysed the melee guy. And now another one. There we go, they're both down. Run, 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 run. Drop down here. Get down again. You might want to heal yourself at this point. Get as much health back as you can. However, to make it quicker, I would advise potions of healing if you've got them. In addition, put another paralysis on if you've got it. You'll ideally want free paralysis. You can use fear poisons at that point if need be, and they will work just as well. Okay, now you've got to lockpick this door. Which, come on. <laughs> Can take a while if you stop messing up. Come, come on, where is it? Oh dear. That's why you want to quick save before you lock doors, because... Before you... Ah, there we go. It's up that way. Yeah, before you try unlocking anything, make sure to quick save. So you don't want to do what I've just done there and waste a whole bunch of lockpicks. At this point... Oh, I forgot about the skeever. Okay, there's a skeever up here. Just kill it. Oh! Strong Skeever! Okay, run away from it, and dodge this guy into the Ragged Flagon. They're fighting now. I don't think the Skeever's always there, so that might have been bad luck on my side. Yeah, normally it's just the guy there, but... Alright, that's those ones dealt with for the time being. However, we will have to go back through. So, whilst you're in here, make sure to heal yourself up. Right, when you're in here, talk to Brynjolf, and you can respond with literally whatever you want. It makes no difference whatsoever. But he tells you there's some deadbeats to deal with. Okay. 
Good. Now, consider it done, and if you ask for help, you get tips on what you can do. So it's worth grabbing it, just for the optional objectives to pop up. Now, fully heal. Now, we got still dagger. Now, I'm going to try and sneak my way out, but this could go badly wrong, because I wasn't expecting the Vaskiva to be here. Right, before I leave, I'm going to hotkey the potions of invisibility as number one, just to try and make things easier for me. And additionally, I'm going to put the poison of fear onto the iron dagger. Switch to third po- Wow. Okay, we are dealing with a very tough skeeva. This normally doesn't happen. Normally you can just kind of get through this bit. Ooh, fine boots, I'm taking those. You can normally get through this bit without too much worry. Oh, oh well. Okay, the skeever died, and the bandit died. We are all good. Alright. Don't go back through that way. Instead, go around this way. Make sure to stay sneaky. Don't use any invisibility potions yet, because you need to activate that lever, and that will cause the invisibility potion to wear off instantly. Now get as close as you can this way before you start getting detected. If you jut off forwards like this, you don't get caught. However, obviously it's a bit slower. You can use the third person camera to look around corners if need be. At this point... Alright, I'm turning invisible. This way. What was I that? can sneak past Okay, keep sneaking past, and out to Rifton we go. Alright, out back in Rifton now, and we have an actual quest to do, which is taking care of, yeah, taking care of business. And easiest way to do this is start off with Bercy over in da -da -da, the whole prawn place here. What is it, Kaji? And what we're going to do is unequip our weapons and just punch this vase nice and quickly. And look at that, vase is down. And tell him it was from Brynjolf. He'll give you some gold. Wait for that to happen. And there you go, 100 gold. And now take a look at if he's got any potions or ingredients. He might have a paralysis poison. If he does, it might be worth taking it, or ingredients that do that. However, he has not. In addition, you can also sell off any potions you don't want with him at this point. However, keep your invisibility potions, and I'd advise any healing potions for if things have gone wrong like they have with me. I hope we're in your choke. I hope you're here for friendlier reasons now. After all, I'm all paid up. What Next stop is the bar, the and talk to Talon J and tell her, Look, tell him even to convince his wife don't not to mess with the Thieves Guild, and then you can just talk to Karava and go through a linear conversation where she just pays up. Take this back to Brynjol and tell him he'll have no more trouble from me. After that, final person to deal with is Helga, and you can just talk to her straight away, because the third person will immediately just give you everything you want. And she'll give us to that, and then it's back down to the rat way we go. Down in here we go. Once again, don't use the invisibility until you need to. However, you likely will need to fairly soon. Khajiits are good at sneaking, which does make this a little easier. However, it may take a few attempts because honestly it is easy to bodge it up. And make sure he doesn't make contact with you and it's getting closer and closer to the... Okay, we only just made it in time. Yeah, you'll see from that that you may need a few attempts. 
because it can go badly wrong. So make sure you're saving beforehand. However, we've not got to deal with this guy, which means no additional invisibility potion. It's so now back into Ragged Flagon. So that was all the difficult stuff. Now we just actually have to get inducted into the Thieves Guild. And that part there, you do have to play it by ear a little bit. You might need more invisibility potions, like... I didn't, or you might need more paralysis poisons like I could have done with. And here you should also get... Oh, I thought he gave you invisibility here as well. He gives you some potions as well, which might be nice. And just run for all of this, and I'll skip ahead after he takes you into the Thieves Guild. Because it's literally just walking through this way. So now we go through into this bit, which is the Ragged Flagon or whatever. And there's a whole bunch of chests here with good, like, thief supplies with them. And in addition, down this way, some Thief Guild gloves and boots. It's immediately half our armour set done. Then I make sure you keep looting all of these chests because they have got just great stuff in them. They're basically some of the best chests you'll get early on in the game. And keep running around. I think I've gone too far. Yeah, I have gone too far. Into this doorway with the Alchemy Lab to your left. And then follow this path along here. And there'll be more boots. There's armor and oh, I'm running out of carry capacity. One second. Let's let's ditch the clothes I'm wearing right now. Just to make it so I can walk. And the hood. And at this point, put them all on. Thieves called armor, boots, gloves, and hood. Ta-da! You now have a full set of Thieves Guild armor. You've made it into the Thieves Guild, have should have at least a couple of thousand gold. And can get well on your way with being a thief on Legendary Difficulty Survival Mode. And I did that in 52 minutes and 4 seconds apparently. And that was with pre-recording stuff. So, you could potentially do this in 45 minutes. That would be the absolute quickest from leaving Helgen Keep. However, including Helgen Keep takes you about an hour. But here we are, part of the Thieves Guild. We do admittedly need to talk to Brynjolf and stuff to officially be part. But we've got ourselves Thieves Guild armour. Which is great armour to have right at the start of a game. It normally offers a 71 on warmth, which isn't great, but increases your carry capacity, gives you better pickpocket and lockpicking, and price is 10% better. Just all amazing stuff. Plus we have an amulet of Xenophar for an additional 10%, so we've got 20% better prices. Plus with the perks we went as well, that's 30% better prices. We're slightly better at sneaking, at pickpocketing, and at making potions. And level 5. You can... You can get, I'd say, level 4 to 8 at this point, depending on how you play it. But for the fast way we did it, that's all that happened. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to leave comments below for any ways you tweak this or if this was helpful. If it was helpful, leave a like. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more Skyrim guides, builds, challenge runs, and all sorts of amazing stuff, then subscribe. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.